What if Uber had been founded in the 1900s? The business model would be different, sure. But what about the logo? Would it be the Uber personal conveyance system? Or the Uber personal conveyance system? But Uber was founded in 2009, and in a digital world, the purpose of a logo has changed quite a bit. Don't believe us? Just take out your phone. The first example of what we now consider a corporate logo was the Bass Ale Red Triangle, trademarked in the 1870s. But logos didn't really hit their stride until the 1950s. This decade and the three to follow would turn out some of the most iconic logos ever. Outside firms would come in and with one pitch, attempt to solve whatever media communication problems a company was having. I asked him if he would come up with a few options. And he said, no, I will solve your problem for you. Nowadays, many companies do design in-house. But that's not the only thing that's changed. Logos themselves used to be simpler. No gradients, no intricate detailing. The reason? Well, the logo would eventually end up in print, which couldn't handle complicated designs. But technology changed all that. The digital revolution meant logos jumped from the page to the computer screen, and that opened up a world of possibilities for designers. Companies can now change their logos again and again and again and again. But when you have to fit your corporate identity into a 64 by 64 pixel square, you may decide to shed some of those details after all. This may suit your fancy if you want to compete in a global market, or if your company used to do just one thing, but now provides a whole host of services. No matter how a company lands on a certain symbol, at the end of the day, all that matters is how consumers connect. The holy grail is universal recognition, and that takes time and marketing muscle. Rome wasn't built in a day, and neither was the power of the swoosh.